Before selling our home, we switched out all of the doorknobs to update the look and discovered that all of the old doorknobs were made from solid brass. I thought this would be the perfect keepsake if I could just figure out how to melt down the brass, cast it, and then turn it into a keychain. So that is what's led me into trying to figure out how to make a backyard foundry. Now, there is already a wildly popular and very detailed and good tutorial on how to make a backyard foundry from the King of Random, and I will link that for you below. All I did was duplicate Grant's tutorial, and while researching backyard foundries, I discovered that there were two primary methods for making one, and I decided to try both. The very first one that I made was the Plaster Paris Sand and Water Mixture. This is by far the easiest way to make a backyard foundry. All the materials are found at the big box store and are relatively inexpensive. However, with that, it's not gonna hold up for more than a handful of burnings. However, since I don't plan to get into casting, I don't think, this isn't an issue for me. But to give it a little bit more life, I did add some Scotch-Brite pads, uh, stainless steel material, to kind of act as uh, what rebar would for concrete. I just took the Scotch-Brite pads and then unwound it shoved it in around the sides and then made sure that center was clear so that I could add in a plastic container and weight it down until that plaster of Paris set in enough to hold it on its own. And this will just give a void in the center, which will be later used to melt the actual metal. Once I had the body drawing, I set it aside and repeated the process to make a lid. And just a little tip from my experience, I coated the inside of my bucket with uh, vegetable oil, just so it would make releasing it a tad bit easier. I also added in the stainless steel Scotch-Brite pads into the lid, and then also some D-rings just to create some handles. If you're wanting a backyard foundry that lasts a little bit longer, then you might consider another alternative to the material choice of making your foundry, which is uh, using a refractory cement. I went ahead and made one just for the sake of testing it out and comparing it to the Plaster of Paris mix. The material is a little bit more expensive, and also I didn't have any luck finding it on a, a local store shelf, so I ordered it off Amazon. But it was still very quick and easy to put together. The main difference between making a foundry from this material and the Plaster of Paris mix is that you line the bottom of your bucket with it first, set in a smaller bucket to create that center void, and then fill in the sidewalls, compacting as you go. Once I had it entirely filled and then the center weighted down, I grabbed a battery power tool and then held it along the side to vibrate all of the air bubbles out. Then I set it aside to dry. After letting everything sit for about 45 minutes, I removed the bucket from the inside of the foundry, as well as removed the lid from its bucket. Now these aren't fully dried yet, which is perfect because I still need to drill a few holes in each component. And once this sets up, it'll be a little bit too difficult to do that. So first the import hole on the foundry itself. This is where the heat enters into the foundry to melt your metal. And whenever you drill this hole, you don't want to go straight in at a 90. You want to go in slightly at an angle so that later on, whenever you insert your propane torch, the flame will actually be hitting the side wall and make it rotate around the entire foundry. This will create a more even heat around the crucible. Then the lid also receives a hole so that you can drop in your metal. Once all of the holes were drilled, I set everything aside to fully dry and then got started on making the actual propane torch. Now again, Grant put out a wonderful tutorial giving all of the details on exactly how to make this. And I just followed it step by step. So I'll link his video below for you to watch if you're interested and make your own. The only thing that I can really contribute from my experience is it was really difficult to find all of these fittings in store. I found three of the fittings at the big box store but ordered the rest off Amazon. And I have compiled a full list in the description if you're interested. Oh, I will tell you though that the regulator was probably the most difficult part. Apparently it's a state regulated item, so that held up the project the longest is trying to locate a regulator. But I definitely recommend not using a propane tank unless you have a regulator on it. Okay, with everything together you can kind of see the bigger picture on how this works. 
So the way that this works is the heat, of course, comes in through the side of the foundry. Then the flame will circle around the inside and heat up the crucible. From there, I'll be able to put this cap on to retain some of the heat and drop in my metal. To where then it'll melt fully in this crucible to where I can then take it out and then pour it and make, make a casting. Okay, now that I have this foundry section figured out, now I'm gonna be researching the process on the sand casting. That way, in next video, I can melt down this brass hardware and cast it into something that I can keep forever. So stay tuned if you are interested. I hope that you enjoyed this video, and I will see you soon. Here's a sneak peek at next week's video where I'm able to start the foundry, melt the brass, and cast my very first part. See how cool that looks? It is beyond an amazing process.